Hello, everyone. This is Father Barry and Mrs. Steve are with me. And together we're going to get you going through Easter with this Easter opening. Uh, Mrs. Steve, you probably know the answer to this prayer when you announce, The Lord is risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Oh, I, 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 the Lord... I'm the sorry. Lord is truly risen, I'm supposed to say. I'm sorry. Let's That's, take two. Okay, so and then I repeat you, right? Well, no, you oh, say yeah. he is risen indeed. Oh, got it. Got sorry. it. Sorry. That's right. Let's try it again. Okay. Is it generic Easter take two? Hi, everyone. It's Easter time, our devotions. It's a popular phrase that is said that is a prayer, an exclamation in this season. It goes like this. The Lord is truly risen. He has risen indeed. And then there's a, another response that goes like this. You're supposed to say, He has risen indeed, and I go, Alleluia, Alleluia. Okay. We'll she get forgot it. already. I have it right in front of me, written. Yeah. I just don't. Okay. Take three. Okay, here we go. Hopefully, Dominic, we're, we're ready. Uh, generic Easter, take three. It's the Easter season leading up to Pentecost, and we have this devotion for you. There's a popular exclamation prayer of this season that has its answer, and then when you give the answer, there's, a, there's an echo back. This is how it goes. The Lord is truly risen. He is risen indeed. He has risen risen indeed alleluia alleluia let's try that with you all okay the lord is truly risen he has risen indeed he has risen indeed alleluia alleluia and now just repeat after me this is the day this is the day that the lord has made that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. That's a verse out of uh, the Psalms that predicts the great day of Easter or the Lord's day when he comes among us. And when Jesus rose from the dead and everything about Jesus' ministry falls into place and is all true. Because the resurrection means everything about Jesus' life. And then after the resurrection, he does um, all these amazing things leading up to an ascension and Pentecost. And we're going to think about that as we go through your short exercises in the Easter season. And so let us get started. The third week of Easter. Boys and girls, we're on page 271, The Road to Emmaus. The faith focus, what happened when the risen Jesus blessed, broke, and shared bread with the two disciples he traveled with to Emmaus? Well, uh, that looks like the roadway to Emmaus there. It's a town that is you know, less than a day's walk, maybe a few hours walk. Uh, seven miles, I could do that in Two, two hours, <laughs> two and a half <laughs> hours. But they were walking slowly because they were having a very interesting talk. These two people were having a very interesting talk to a stranger. Now, it was Easter Sunday, but they didn't know that it was happy things that just happened. They didn't know it. They had left before Mary Magdalene saw the great thing when she saw Jesus alive from the dead. It was before Peter saw Jesus alive from the dead. Uh, and so these two people are walking along. And we believe one is Mary of Clopas, and she's the mother of uh, two of the apostles. And we heard about her in our last lesson, Mary, the mother of James and John. So uh, they're, uh, they're walking along, and they really are interested in what this stranger has to say and for some reason they don't understand that it's Jesus you know it's just kind of like they 
that they just don't catch on. Uh, and I think in some ways God didn't want them to catch on just yet. He wanted them to catch on when he broke the bread. That's when they were able to catch on. And that's really the lesson about this whole thing, is that now we come and break the bread, and the priest will break the host right before everybody gets a host. You see, he'll make a big deal of breaking the host, right? And when Jesus did that uh, in their house, he said, now this is what we'll do from now on in Christianity. We're going to have, we're going to break bread, Holy Communion, and then you see who I am. You see who I am through Holy Communion. So that's the lesson in this story. Let's go on the road. Okay, the road to Emmaus. Let's read it together and I'll read it out loud. Good news is great to receive. When we receive it, we just cannot help sharing it. When was the last time you received good news? How did you feel? Did you tell anyone else? The Gospel according to Luke tells us about two disciples who had not yet heard the good news of Jesus' resurrection. They were puzzled by reports that Jesus had been raised from the dead and he had been seen by many. As they were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, they were joined by a stranger. The stranger was the risen Jesus, but they did not recognize him. The two disciples started telling the stranger about Jesus. The risen Jesus began explaining the scriptures, which they knew so well to help them understand everything that had happened. Finally, as the sun began to set, they were approaching Emmaus, the village where the disciples lived. Amazed and interested in what the stranger was telling them, they invited the risen Jesus to stay with them. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it. Then he shared it with them. At that moment, the disciples suddenly recognized the stranger to be the risen Jesus. Jesus immediately disappeared, and the disciples hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples the good news of what happened to them. <laughs> he immediately disappeared, which is kind of interesting. It is. It just kind of. You know, and they don't understand that it's him. You know, it's. That's, I think, too, though, there's a lot of people that understand that Jesus is in the Holy Communion and that Jesus is in the Bible readings. They don't understand Jesus is here trying to communicate to us. And you're at Mass, and you're like, hmm, when's this getting over? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and right. Jesus sees sometimes that we don't catch on how special it is that we're hearing from him and receiving of him. So you as a fifth grader, we're just you're, you're at that point now where... I think you can understand that something something important really is going on at Mass. And you can see by the way other people act that are in the church that this is a very, very special part of their lives, a very special start of their week, you know? Right. It has each week at Mass we listen to the Scriptures and we share in the Eucharist the bread and wine that have become the body and blood of Christ. Fed by the word of God and the Eucharist, we are sent forth into our homes and our neighborhoods and our schools. We tell others about Jesus and the good news of God's love for us. The activity you have here is walking with Jesus. Pray this prayer with your family and with your friends. You have a leader in all, and so it'll be very easy just whoever's in your family and just pray it together during this time as father has said and just realize how special it is that jesus had sacrificed and he is the risen lord and that we believe in that and we can experience that every week and so pray this together amen alleluia we think of easter season we think of the resurrection day easter sunday and then we go all the way up to the ascension and then the Pentecost, 50 days later after Easter. 
The beginning of the story is this, that on the first day of the week, meaning Sunday, where the disciples were, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And when he said that, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus, in his resurrection appearance, said to them again, Peace be with you. Now as the Father sent me, so I send you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now many days later, Jesus was with them along the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. And he revealed himself in this way to Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, and James and John, and two other disciples. They were out fishing, and Jesus called out to them from the shore, Children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. He said, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. And they cast it, and there were so many fish, they were not able to pull it in for the number of fish. Now, the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. Simon Peter jumped from the boat and came to the shore with the other disciples later coming in the boat, dragging along a net with many fish. And Jesus said, Let's come and have breakfast. They all realized it was the Lord, and Jesus cooked the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. And they remembered his miracle of the bread and the fish earlier in their ministry. You know, later they, they go to the mountain for the ascension, and then Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit now to you. This is my finished work to live inside of you. And so that work is what we're praying for as we go through the Easter season, for the Holy Spirit of Jesus to live in us and through us and to give us power to be children of God. Mrs. Stever, do you have that prayer? Yes, let's close with the prayer to the Holy Spirit, and it's found in the back of your book, though many of you may know it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Amen.